Hello everyone. Um, it's a pretty chilly night here in Central America. I'm coming from the highlands of Guatemala, uh, Shela, Guatemala. And um, I'm just making a short video on some of the cool things um, you can have here if you live in Central America or if you live in Guatemala. Uh, an acquaintance of mine or a friend of mine just shot a video on uh, Peru and all the benefits of living there. And um, he's asking me to put up a, a, a quick video. So this is kind of a response. Um, there's a lot. There's a lot of cool things. Of course, Central America is a lot, lot more different than Peru. He had mentioned uh, in Peru you have the deserts, you have the water or the ocean, the Pacific, and then you have uh, the jungles. That's one thing that's really cool about South America. I haven't been there yet, but I've really done a lot of research and um, going down to the Amazon is, is well for me anyways. It'd be a pretty exciting and thrilling thing to do, but. Uh, he pointed out the Nazca lines and the ruins and things like that, and opportunities to work at a call center or teach English. Those things are a little bit better in, in South America, I believe. Um, you can earn a little bit higher wages, at least from my understanding. Um, in Central America, the highest wage I've ever seen for a, for a teacher, an English teacher, and that's for the helicopter schools where the wages are about the highest, is about 1500 1600 Anyways, um, Call centers here you can make, I don't know, between 800 and 1200 You might start out at five or 600 um, but as you become a manager, and if you're a gringo, that's where they'll pigeonhole you, uh, but this video isn't really about working for the call centers, but um, if you do a good job and if you can handle the stress, you'll eventually be making eight to 1200 which for Central America is actually pretty good. Um, it can get you a fairly nice middle-class middle class lifestyle, and just as a little how things work here when you get up to that kind of money a lot of families here will have maids and things like that and big houses and car payments and, how, and uh, motorcycle payments anyways I'm just going to start this off by talking about some of the cool things here uh, we do have the ocean um, and we do have the um, Caribbean side but as you look at the map of Guatemala you'll see there's not a lot of Caribbean uh, beachfront but there is some um, and on the Caribbean side you have the Garifunos um, uh, allegedly, I mean, if you read the history books, I mean, the history books are written by the um, the winners of the conflict, but uh, they came from, uh, they, they were the slaves that came from the Caribbean who escaped. But in modern times, um, a lot of the uh, people from the Caribbean and Central America, they, they move around a lot, kind of like the Mayans. They may not have a passport or a, you know, ID or anything, but they do, they do move around a lot. But I, I, I guess they're from, not St. Vincent, but that other uh, island I can't think of offhand. Uh, Anyways, um, that's where you find a lot of the Garifunas. That's another cool thing. You have lots of different people. You have the Garifunos. You have the um, Mayans. You have the Mennonites. You have a lot of uh, Asians like Chinese, Taiwanese, Japanese. You have a lot of people from Saudi. Well, not a lot, but you have a few people from Saudi. You have people from like um, Jordan. I've met people from Jordan. And recently, the newer immigrant groups are now the Syrians. You can you know, find them, at least in the capital, you'll see them. They're buying up, well, I don't know if they're buying, but I think they're leasing up uh, commercial places there, and they usually have bakeries. Not always, but usually. And if I had to guess, they have a few, um, how can I put this? They lend money at high rates of interest. Anyways, uh, so one cool thing here is all the different immigrants. You know, you can see here, it's, it's kind of like Star Trek. You just see Mennonites, you know, uh, just like they dress in the States or in Canada. You have uh, people from Europe the Middle East, Asia, all mixing and mingling and doing business. That's, you can see that in uh, kind of the eastern part of the country where it's a lot hotter, more towards the Caribbean. And there things are way more relaxed. Uh, William was talking about um, visas. Their <laughs> visas are kind of a, I don't know, I would guess, if I had to guess, most people there are don't even have like a passport or much less a visa. But there, that's one place you can go to where you probably never get kicked out of the country. But this isn't about you know illegal immigration or, or whatever, but anyways, you can you yeah, find them on the east side. And, and and what's cool is everyone there works for cash. All the business owners, all the employees, everyone just does cash. And it's everyone from all walks of life. And there you'll find more people speaking English than really Spanish. When you're in the Garifuna community, you'll find people speaking English and Spanish, and then there's a Creole that they speak. But uh, for doing business, it's, it's mostly in English and Spanish. So that's one cool thing. Another cool thing is privacy um, I'm more of a privacy seeker that's what I like living here it's not as maybe modern as Peru or other parts of South America in the sense that 
a lot of things here are still like the 19th century in that you can do a lot of jobs here for cash. You can rent apartments for cash. You don't have to show any ID, but although that's changing quite a bit, but you can rent rooms here. No one ever asks you for that kind of stuff. And then um, another thing is, let's say you have a corporation. You can uh, shield your, the ownership of the corporation. I don't know if you know this, but up to about, I think, uh, 2017, they had bank secrecy laws in Guatemala. Well, now uh, under the pressure of the U U.S. and the E.U., they've gotten rid of those. But if you have a corporation, um, it's still pretty private. Uh, for example, they'll have the government, whatever offshore you know country you come from, they'll have to get a court order just like they would in the past in Switzerland or in Austria to get the beneficial the name of the beneficial owner. And that's pretty hard to do in a court down here, but not impossible. Pretty hard, but you can still shield the ownership of the assets and things of that nature. And if you want to, I'm not really recommending this, but you could like get all your utilities and cars in the name of the corporation. Maybe some of those things might be worth it, but because there's so many opportunities, so you don't really need to do that, and no one really knows who you are anyways. Uh, that's pretty cool. Another thing I'll just mention offhand is I mentioned this before in my videos. Once you become a resident, you can do a legal name change. So if you're really worried about your privacy, you can you know change your name. But I wouldn't recommend that till after you got your your uh, uh, your passport or your I forget what you call it, but once you become a citizen of the country, then you can change your passport and your deputy and all the other ID in one fell swoop. Um, so that's that's another cool thing. Um, and it's affordable. Like the cost of a company down here isn't that much. Uh, and the carrying cost used to be 50 to 100 bucks a month. Um, that's kind of going up, and the cost for a corporation is going up because of all the Asians moving in and other Central Americans doing business here and South Americans, uh, lawyers and uh, – Corporate work is kind of it's going up, but in the next recession, that will probably edge down a little bit. So that so that's a, the second thing is you can, you can get your privacy back if you want it. Um, you can totally live off the radar if you want. If you want to buy some land or lease land, and you don't use any electronics or anything, and you know do all your buying and selling in cash or whatever. It's not really for me, but for some people who want that kind of rural lifestyle like the Mennonites have, you can you can do that. Um, oh yeah. Uh, Talking about the coasts and the beaches, um, you can go to the coasts or beaches in three to five hours. Like in, if you're in the capital, you can be in El Sal the Salvadorian beaches in about three hours. If you're up in the mountains like I am, five to eight if you're on the bus. If you have a car, maybe three to five. But if you're going to the uh, – that's El Salvador. If you're going to the beaches in, um, in um, here uh, in Guatemala, you can do that in two or three hours on the bus. Um, from the capital, I don't think it's that far either, um, but from Shale, it's two or three hours. The thing about the beaches here, they're not as nice as El Salvador or Costa Rica or even Me Mexico. Um, not everyone, but a lot of people I know here just go to Mexico or El Salvador for the beaches. Excuse me. And like I said, you can go to the Caribbean side. Um, they have some – it's not really well known. People don't really talk about it much or it's not really written. At least I don't see people writing about it too much. But they do have some Caribbean, nice Caribbean spots. But if you're going uh, to that part of the country, um, you can just go to Honduras and then go, and then go to the islands. Those are well, they were really nice. Now they're getting pretty touristy now, but and the costs of go, are going up a little bit. But you can go to the beach pretty far. You, you can get a hotel for 20, 30 bucks. You can get like a hostel much cheaper. But so as far as the cost of living, it doesn't really cost much to go to a hotel. Um, William was talking about the food. Food's okay here. It's not exactly my cup of tea, but um, I do like it. Uh, it's not as hot as or picante like in Mexico or, or things like that. It's just a little different. Um, there's a lot of indigenous culture here in the food, and, and that's a, quite a bit different. Um, kind of reminds me a little bit or, or a lot of, of the Philippines. I really like the food in the Philippines. Now, there's people who love it and people who hate it in the Philippines, but, but me, I like the food in the Philippines. So if you, if you like something a little different, you might like that. Um, um, as far as the capital... Uh, the capital is probably not as nice as the capital in South America, uh, but you know if you want to live there, the costs are going to cost a little bit more. I don't think there's it's as nice as say Mexico City or uh, Panama City, but I don't really want to live in Panama, uh, so I won't comment too much there. But there's a little bit more crime there. That's another benefit. Now this is just my opinion, but um, crime is going down in in, in the Central America. Like the murder rate and violent crime in Honduras, El Salvador, and Guatemala has been going down. Now it's still pretty high compared to the United States, but it is coming down. Um, I don't know how long that'll last. I don't know why that is. Maybe it's immigration. Maybe it's uh, 
an aging population. I'm, I'm just not really sure why that is, but, but it does appear to be coming down. So uh, another benefit is living here is, is the um, low cost of living. It's not, it's not a lot of crime if you live in a smaller community. And uh, you get to know people pretty easy. People get to know you. It can be pretty safe. Um, unless you're really partying and drinking a lot um, in the bars and clubs and stuff, very unlikely you'll be affected by crime. Um, let me think if there's anything else. Um, what are some other advantages? Um, for me, one of the bigger ones is low cost of living. Um, the apartment I'm in now is about 250 260 depending on the exchange rate. I've typically gotten apartments for a lot less. Well, not a lot less, but you know, like 150, 200 bucks. Um, for 350 to 500, you can get really, really nice apartments, at least in the capital. I'm not saying you cannot get a nice apartment here, but you're more likely for that price range to get a really big house, which is nice. But um, if you want more of the amenities of the capital, you, you'll probably only find it there. Now there is or has been some new construction. I haven't been out and seen it yet, so I'm not really sure if it's on par with what I've seen in the capital, but in the capital, you can have top of the line um, places to live for like 500 to 1,000. They're mostly like five to six, seven hundred, but most people don't negotiate, so they end up paying more than a thousand. But anyways, there's there's just like a lot of empty places right now in the capital, and um, so you can live in the in really, really, really nice gated communities with the guards and all that kind of jazz. Um, more advantages. Uh, those are those are what I look for in a place to live. Um. Some of the downsides is you can't go hike. I, I like to hike and go on walk a lot. The streets are pretty small here compared to Mexico. And there's not a lot of green or natural places like in Mexico that you can walk around in. There's kind of a few disadvantages. But uh, right off the bat, those are uh, most of the advantages. Oh, we still have, like I said earlier in the video, we have similar working opportunities. Uh, we, you can work at the call center. You can teach English. I wouldn't really recommend that. If you're going to teach English, just teach for a Chinese school. You'll make a lot more money. Um, and recently, there's been a few changes in the online schools. Like before, you didn't really, you're supposed to have a college degree, but they weren't really enforcing that. Um, now I hear um, they're trying to enforce it, but they haven't yet. But what they're doing is, if you do not have that, they're not exactly well. They're yeah, they're requiring you to have a tussle or a TEFL. Um, so that's kind of a new thing. So if if you're on the fence about getting in, get the TEFL, get the TESOL, and get on in before they, it becomes a complete requirement that you have college. Um, of course, if you work for the call centers, none of that matters. Just speaking English or having a good command of English is all that really matters. And then uh, working up to the manager level because then you'll make a lot more money and uh, it's a lot less stressful. And uh, anyways, that's what I would do. But I've only had two friends that did it, and one of them didn't like it. The other one did. He did pretty good, but uh, you do pretty good. Anyways, uh, visas are easy. I don't think the visas – it's easy here, but it's, it's not like in South America, like in Peru or Chile, where you get your citizenship in two years. Here you got to wait for five years, so that is kind of a downside. But once you get temporary resident, if, if you don't want to do a business, just get temporary. Then after a year and a month, you can apply for permanent. And then after uh, you get permanent residency, five years after that, you pretty much, you, if you're living here, I mean, you can pretty much get uh, citizenship. The thing is, what's cool about here, this easy, you only have to be one day in the country to qualify and you won't lose your residency. But at the end of your two years, or it might be the last one or two years of your five year, you need to be in the country more than one day. So I'll just put that out there. But there are exceptions, and uh, I know what they are, but you better talk to a lawyer. But you can get around that, but I'm not really suggesting you do that. Just if you really want to get citizenship here, you, you really need to live here. It's like Paraguay. If, if you can get residency there, but you're not likely to get citizenship because most people don't live there. So then they apply for it and then they get rejected. But if you really are going to live there, you, you can get it. Now, again, there's even exceptions of that, If, but I don't want to talk about that here. Uh, but, but there is even exceptions there. But a lot of people, they want these second passports, but they won't really live in the country. And then they get kind of pissed off when they don't you know, get get the passport when they apply for it. But as far as rule of law, as, that, as far as that goes, most people who, who apply for it get it. Unlike we're in Ecuador, that's recently changed, and in Panama, that's even changing. I run into more and more expats who followed the rules, complied with all the rules, met all the requirements, and they're not getting the passport or the naturalization, that, which would lead to passport. So if you really, really want that second passport, that's one of the benefits of here or, or South America. The thing about South America is, is using Chile, 
I just know Chile and Peru, it's two years, I believe. I think in Brazil it's three years, but I might be wrong. Um, I don't know as much about Brazil because I, I don't have as much interest in going there. Um, I forget what it is in Bolivia, but um, they do. Bolivia has some really awesome. <laughs> if you want to get a missionary visa, uh, I'm not saying you should do that, but you can, and it's really easy to get. So um, people talk about immigration, or pardon me, they talk about education visas. Bolivia and some of these other countries like Peru, not Peru, uh, the Philippines, <coughs> you can get that missionary visa quite easy, and in some cases that will lead to citizenship. Anyways, you just you have a lot of options. Anyways, these are just a few observations on uh, some of the benefits of living in Central America. Oh, one more just before I go. Once you get your DEPI or your DPI, you can go to the surrounding countries, which would be um, the C4 countries, be Guatemala, Honduras, El Salvador, and Nicaragua, and you don't need your passport. So, like, I don't know, you get your passport and your DEPI, and then you just want to use your DEPI to go to uh, – um, surrounding countries and if you do a legal name change and then open up a bank or whatever you can kind of lay low or do whatever the hell you want anyways um, that's just it for this video I'm gonna upload this like share subscribe if you leave a comment I'll try to answer it on video um, tell me what you think tell me about where you live anyways have a good night there thank you